In this session, we're going to look at creating a future predictor. So we're going to ask the user a series of questions, and then we're going to use their responses and make an output down the bottom. So we're going to use the input statement to actually ask the user to like enter their name, and we're going to store that in a variable. And then later on, we're going to create what's known as a concatenated string, where we're using text and variables to make a complex output. So if we enter their name such as Marsden, it said, hi Marsden, you'll buy a house on and pet name. So what, what is the name of one of your pets? And then we'll display that in here. So at the end of the project, you can actually ask the user a whole series of questions and get the responses, but the responses will be without the colors. So let's get underway. For this assignment, I'll be using the IDE, which is PyCharm. You can download this from JetBrains, so it's PyCharm, and I'm using version 2018.14. I'm going to create a new project. It's going to ask me what I'd like to call it, example task. And this is a folder where all the files will be located, so I'm going to call it example tasks, and that way I can have multiple Python files underneath this. When I click on the interpreter project, it's a good idea to make sure that you've got 3.6 selected. If you don't have 3.6 selected, just go down and make sure you've got a version of Python 3.6 in your list. If not, you may have to head to Python Organization and download the latest version of Python. Once you've got that selected, you can click on Create. This will create a project for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is right mouse click up on Example Tasks and create a new and a new Python file. It's going to ask me for the name, and in this case here, it's going to be the future predictor and then click on OK. This will open up a blank file. Now one of the first things we need to do is actually put some developer comments in there. So developer comments are what we use to basically put your name in the code. So we're just going to start with the hash symbol and two minus signs. The hash symbol starts with a comment. I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see that a little clearer. And then I can actually put developer and then you can actually put your name there. So in my case, I'm just going to put www.lmarsden.com, but you can actually put your name in there so you know who developed this. So one of the first things we need to do is get some information from the user. So this is known as the input. So I'm just creating an area that we can actually collect the information. And then later we want to display some information to the user, and this will be known as output. Currently, there's no processing. So the first thing we want to do is ask them what their name is. So we want to store that somewhere. So we're going to go name is equal to, and then we're going to input. Input will prompt the user for a response. And in here, we can then ask the question. So we're going to ask, what is your name? And put a space. So when we run this now, so we go right mouse click, and then we go down to run future predictor. Down the bottom here, you can see that the program's gone, what is your name? So in here, you can put Marsden, or whatever name you want, and we can collect that. Sometimes it's best to read code right to left rather than left to right. So take, what is your name? Use that input and store that in name. And then we can actually output that at the bottom. If I go down here and just go print name, when I run the program now, what is your name? And I put in here Marsden. Because we've called print name, it takes the contents of that variable and outputs that. So it outputs Marsden. If I run the program again and use something like 123, when I go enter, it outputs 123. So it's taking what I whatever I've entered there. So we want to collect a series of bits of information, such as the pet name, so we're going to call it pet. Now notice a variable name must be lowercase, all has to be one word. If you want two words, you need to use a lower, an underscore, and then name. But I'm going to keep the names, variable names very short, so we're just going to have pet. We're going to go input bracket, um, what is the name of one of your pets? Some people have more than one, so I'm just going to say, well, what is the name of one of them? We can use that in our output. So if I want to know what street they live on, I can use the same thing. So I'm asking the users to give me some information. So what is the name of the street you live on? 
we can get a number and I can actually ask them for input pick a number between 1 and 6 I can also ask them about colour what was the colour of your first bike I'll just change this to a capital P just to be consistent so these are a series of questions that I want to ask the user so when I run the program now you'll see what is your name I can put in Marsden um, what is the name of one of your pets I'm going to put cat uh, what is the street you live on um, down street um, pick a number between one and six I'm going to put six and what is what is what was the color of your first bike I'm going to put green and then it does Marsden which is our output here so we've actually collected all this information from the user so now I want to make what's called a complex or a concatenated output. So a concatenated output is basically creating a sentence using variables and text. But first of all, I'm going to put a blank line between the input and the output. Because you can see down the bottom here that they're hard up against that. So I'm going to use what's called a return carriage. And that's using a quote backslash n. And this will put a return carriage in or a blank line and then I can go print bracket quote high and just test my program right here so once again I'm going to go through the process name Marsden and pet name can be Gus then I can ask what street do you live on down street I can then look at um, numbers between one and six so I'll pick six I can then ask for the first bike color, green. And then it puts a blank line and says hi. So in our statement, we were going hi, then the person's name, your buy a house on. So what I want to do now is display the person's name. So I'm going to use the plus sign. This allows us to join text with other objects. In this case here, I want to put the variable name. So I'm going to have hi, and then the name appear. So when it runs now, I'm just going to put Marsden in. Oh. Click down the bottom and I'm going to put Marsden. And then I'm just going to go one, 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 one. And you see at the bottom here, it has high Marsden. But you notice that they're hard up against, and that's because there's no space. I've got to physically put the space in there. So it goes high, space, and then the contents of the variable. So this time when the program runs, if I put if I zoom in and put Marsden down here and go enter and just go one 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 you can see hi Marsden so what I want to do now is build a complex string so what I want to do then is go plus because I want to add some more text and this is where we had a comma so grammatically it's hi Leon or hi Marsden comma you will buy a house on and then quote so this will come up after this string now so when it runs once again I just put MARS Mars and just go one 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 and you see hi Mars you will buy a house on so you can see the complex sentence being built so let's complete our complex sentence so remember, if you go back to the original um, part, you'll see the full sentence, but I'll write it out here for you. You'll buy a house on, and then we want to use the pet name. So I'm going to start typing P, E, and you see pets lit up. I'm just going to press enter, and it writes it for me. Plus, and I'm going to put a quote, space, street. Now, the reason for the space at the start is so if I put in there cat, space street so it doesn't actually put them up hard like they didn't start with high name so it works both ways and then it's going to have street in a suburb called and then we want to add another variable which is street 
So that variable will displayed. Now once again, I need to make sure I put the space in there, otherwise the street name will end up hard against. And then afterwards, a space. And you'll notice this line of code gets really long, so you've got to manage that. Then I'm going to put a uh, full stop after the street. The house will have space, quote, plus number, plus, quote, stories, space, stories, and have a space, quote, plus, quote, color. Now you notice you use the Australian color rather than American, and that way it works well as a variable. And if you do web-based programming, your variable names are used a U in because color in a HTML document or actually in a style sheet to be accurate is C O L O R uses American spelling. So just be aware of that. So this way by spelling it in an Australian way, I avoid what are called reserved words. Color plus and then space front door full stop, end quote. So let's run the program now. It looks rather long with that statement, but it's known as a concatenated complex sentence. So let's fill this out. So what is your name? Marsden. What is the name of one of your pets? Skittles. Uh, what is the street you live on? Avis. Pick a number between one and six, five. Color of the first bike. Red. So it says, Hi Marsden, you'll buy a house on Skittle Street in a suburb called Avis. The house will have five stories and have a red front door. So that's using input from the user and creating a complex output. If you found this tutorial useful, give it a like and also subscribe to my channel and have a look around at other Python programming tutorials.